I'm here today uh, from Question Pro. Um, we are talking insights, and I'm joined by Fiona from Mesh Experience. Um, you and I used to work together. I think I was just checking. It was 13 or 14 years ago that we first met, maybe even 50, actually, when we first met, working in different agencies. Um, and then, yeah, you um, brought me into your um, world and we learned a lot about um, customer experiences and, and how different customers were interacting with different touch points across a journey. Um, I've gone in a different direction. So um, here at Question Pro, we're a software sales uh, technology business. And we are empowering our customers through understanding touch points as well. Um, so I just wanted to start by getting a little bit of an understanding, Fiona, of kind of how you see the current landscape within your um, world at the moment. Well, first of all, Neil, thank you so much for inviting me. And it is a real pleasure to feel that there's that sense of connection over such a long period of time. And I must say, I think it's fantastic that uh, when you're looking at solutions and tech solutions, that you actually are bringing an understanding of insight into that, because I think that sometimes can be lacking um, with some of the, the tech solutions. So I think having that is, is, really, is really beneficial. I was thinking back because 18 years ago, we launched Mesh Experience at SMR Congress. And in those days, it felt as though using a mobile phone was really, you know, kind of way out there and, yeah. and was very sceptically received. Whereas now we're talking about things like generative AI. So things have really, really moved on from a, a tech perspective and tech tools enabling us in what we're doing. But I do think some of the fundamentals are the same. So the fact that we're having a discussion now, the fact that it's conversations where you really get the insight and the ability to have an impact in a client organization. Um, and actually, although our tech has changed at Mesh, we actually fundamentally believe that experiences are enduring and that measuring experiences are enduring. So it doesn't matter whether it's a mailing or it's the metaverse. You yeah. still need to understand people's real experiences, not synthetic ones. That's not to say that synthetic isn't an interesting area to explore, but we need to really know, do people notice different experiences that brands are putting out there? How are they reacting to those experiences? And what's that going to do in terms of brand growth? It's really interesting that you you sort of touch on the the different kind of ways in which the industry is developing and changing and growing. And I think we all need to be mindful of change because, yeah, in 18 years, the world has, in our industry has tipped on its axis massively. Everything was led by human insight. Uh, technology was seen as an enabler. Uh, but now I think there's a real shift in the paradigm where there's, a, I think, a role for technology to really support the discovery of human insights in tandem rather than just as a kind of background enabling vehicle. Um, I heard an interesting comment yesterday in one of the um, conversations that I had that modern insight is the sort of perfect blend and balance between the mind and the machine. I'm quite fascinated by that particular phrase. Do you, do you agree with that, Fiona? And, and, and sort of what, what would you say is the balance, or the right balance between those two? First of all, I agree on that idea of the balance between man and machine, or human and machine. I don't think there's a right or a wrong. 
And I think it's changing over time. So every presentation that I've been seeing here at uh, SMR, but also some of the things that we do with the Market Research Council and with, with others, it's been about when, does hu when, do, when do humans uh, interact and when do we let the machine do mm. the working? So yesterday I saw Elaine Rodrigo was talking about the fact that actually the machines are brilliant on the maths bit. They can mm. really speed up that bit. But there are other moments when you really need the human. And so I think there will never be what is the perfect balance. I think it will be an iterative and changing process that we're learning at mm. the moment. And I think it's a fascinating one. Good. I couldn't agree more, um, but I, it's made me think, which is a great thing, because part of these conversations that we're having here at SMR is about sort of reframing how we see um, our different worlds and landscapes, because if we get an impression of what our clients want and need, from these conversations, we can throw those back into what we're trying to achieve in our own companies as well. So I, I totally agree with that. I think the, I mean, let's go sort of to um, client challenges. You spend a lot of time, I certainly see this from following you on, on LinkedIn and, and, and keeping sort of track of what Mesh Experience is doing, um, that you, know, you spend a lot of your time talking to clients. Right. So what would you say are the sort of key challenges that you're hearing about in the industry at the moment that they're facing? Um, first sort of point. And then the second is what can agencies and partners um, do differently to help with those challenges? I think... One of the biggest ones at the moment, and of course it's September, so many clients are now looking at their next financial year in terms of planning, is the budget conversations. Mm -hmm. And I think that's coming at a marketing level and also at a, an insight level. And I was just watching a presentation just before I came in here, uh, which was citing the fact that 78% of clients are needing to justify the ROI on their campaigns. So mm -hmm. they're really needing good measures in order to have that justification. At the same time, we've seen traditional marketing metrics eroding. So things like share of voice, which always used to be great metrics to use, they don't work when the majority of your money is being put into things other than TV. You know, if it's going into digital or sponsorship or retail media or all kinds of other areas. Mm -hmm. They don't feature in the traditional share of voice metric. We're also seeing that media reach, which years ago when I was in marketing and the agency said, well, we're reaching this number of people, you knew that they would. And the biggest concern I used to have when I was working on pet food was, would someone go and get a cup of tea in the ad break? Mm. Well, I mean, that's all changed just because you're pushing it out there doesn't mean that anyone's actually noticing it or paying attention. And so those kind of metrics, which have been used and fed into modeling for years, are just eroding in their usefulness. So it's making it harder for clients to actually justify the return on their investment. I do think that we can really help. Um, one thing that we've just put out recently, actually, so I was working with uh, Jack Cook, who's the ex-marketing director of Fidel Fidelity International. Mm -hmm. And she has been very successful both at Fidelity and BT and other, other client organizations at having good conversations with the CFO. Yeah. And I think helping clients, I think we can help in that conversation. So one of the things that she would say is have a look at how much money you need to play to be in a market at all before you even start discussing what your budget should be. Mm. I think the other thing is we all know that if you don't invest in marketing, your brand share and your brand equity will erode. We all know that in time. Does I, the CFO know that? I think the CFO uh, does know that. Yeah. But the problem is that it's in time. It could be two yeah. or three years. 
So, and if you think about the tenure of people on the C-suite, then you might not be there anymore. And one aha moment that we had about uh, three weeks ago was that actually, and you'll, you'll be aware of this, uh, Neil, we can see exactly what people are experiencing in real time. So we can see how present brands are in real time. And Kantar was mentioning yesterday in the blueprint uh, for brand growth, how important presence is. Well, we know exactly what experiences people are having. So we can literally say, well, these are marketing ones, take those out. Now what happens to your share of experience? Mm -hmm. What happens to your presence? Well, immediately you go from being the brand leader in terms of share of experience to the fourth in the market. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that maybe if we can show the immediacy yeah. of some of these decisions, as opposed to the outcome which is going to happen in a couple of years, that that may be more potent in the conversations. Yes, and it's going to drive that uh, financial decision makers thinking um, a little bit more urgently as well, because they they need to understand the bigger picture, but they also need to understand the here and now, which is, you know, if you're not taking those actions and um, gaining those insights directly now, then you're going to be behind the curve when the next sort of um, phase of <laughs> new challenges comes through for any business. And, and we don't know what that is around each corner. So that, that's great. Um, uh, the final sort of question um, that I wanted to throw in there is um, we're hearing a lot about AI, generative AI, um, in not only at SMR Congress, but you know, probably the last three or four conferences I've been to, in truth, have been dominated by conversations around AI. I don't think we need to cover that, actually. What I'm more interested in is beyond and besides AI, what interests you regarding the sort of next two or three years of our research um, universe and metaverse, um, the, taking AI out of the equation. I, I feel really passionately about insight being at the heart of an organization's decision making and putting the customer in that position. But to do that, I think is quite hard because many of us in our industry um, are more comfortable behind the figures. Mm -hmm. And actually, in order to lead, to truly lead in an organization, you've got to be out there and being passionate and telling the story so that everybody in the organization can understand it and rally behind that. And within the Market Research Council, so I'm mm. a member of that and I was the president, I'm now the past president of the Market Research Council, that's given an opportunity to have a look at could we set up some kind of program, an executive leadership program, mm. based on what has been done very successfully by the Marketing Academy. And what they've done is they've looked at leadership, but they've done it through trying to create authentic emerging leaders mm. in that area. So it's not about craft skills, it's mm. not about the four Ps, it's not about qual and quant, it's not about AI, it's not about any of those things. It's yeah. actually about you as an individual, your purpose and what you can do in the world. And so for me, I'm actually feeling really passionate about that. Excellent, thank you, Fiona. That, that's something that isn't perhaps new, right? It, it's, no. it's been there since the beginning of time. Um, the authenticity is is something that I try to um, a principle, I guess, that I work under as well. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of people here at SMR, and um, and everyone wants to have interesting, insightful conversations. But actually, the core of that is being authentic, and and, and that extends into um, client boardrooms, and it extends into insight teams and into all of the stakeholders that um, they need to deal with. So, you know, I think I applaud 
that kind of uh, goal, I guess, that you're setting yourself through the work that you're doing there. Um, yeah, I look forward to sort of seeing that develop a little bit more in the conversations that I have going forward. Fiona, thank, thank you. you so much. Um, this has been a, a really insightful conversation for me. It's, it's wonderful to reconnect with you as well and that we see each other around the circuit, but we haven't had a chance to have a, a conversation like this uh, in, in a number of years. So um, we've been talking insights. Um, uh, I'm Neil from Question Pro. Uh, please do uh, like and subscribe to um, this podcast and um, I hope and share it with, uh, um, with other friends and colleagues. And uh, yeah, Fiona, all the very best. Enjoy the rest of this conference and I'll see you at the next one. Thank you so much, Neil. It was a real pleasure to reconnect and to, to talk about uh, insights. So thank you. You can't know the answer to a question without first asking it. But how do you ask the questions? More importantly, how will people answer them? That is where Question Pro comes in to support you, empowering you to build and deploy amazing experiences that collect clean and useful data. With our powerful online based, built for enterprise survey platform, it is easy to create, collect, and act on your data. Create an impactful survey in minutes from scratch by importing an existing survey or choose from over 350 ready-made templates that have been vetted by our expert market research professionals. Add as many respondent contacts as you want and share them through multiple distribution methods. Collect offline data and use white-labeled mobile apps to ensure data collection is extensive and up-to-date. Take advantage of our specialized services to manage enterprise projects, as well as the instances where the insights collection is complicated but imperative. Then, leave the rest to Question Pro. Sit back and watch us work magic as the data is analyzed and compartmentalized into functional insights automatically. Create role-based access reports in addition to exporting the data and insights into your proprietary tool set, allowing you to focus on what's most important. Making smart decisions. Question Pro. Survey software that gets the job done.